What's up, guys, and welcome back to Hashtag Sports. On today's episode, we're going to go crazy. We're going to play a game. We love playing games here at Hashtag Sports called This or That. Paul and I will be given different scenarios of this or that, and you have to pick one. The problem is the other person has to take the opposite point. Things can get a little dicey here. Make sure you hit that like button unless YouTube knows it's a good video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to join the team and Hashtag Nation. Let's see what we got with this or that. Paul, you know what? They, first of all, Hashtag Nation, Bills Mafia, thank you for joining us once again. You know, we're going to start doing these more regular, and we're going to be doing them in the car, so stay tuned. Uh, make sure you hit all the uh, socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, show sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes, which now has an app. So make sure you guys go check that out. It, the link will be in the description as well as everything else. All episodes go to iTunes and Spotify. Paul, we've been doing this 11 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just say that there is so much consumable content in the Buffalo Bills stratosphere right now with mm -hmm. guys like us doing a bunch of stuff. It's almost like I'm trying to think of what it's like. You know, I mean, there, there's enough content and stuff for everyone. We obviously I'll go into some lives every once in a while when I have some time. I really don't have a lot of time, but when I do have some time, I'll go into a couple of lives. And I'll see some familiar names that are in the chat that come into our yeah. chat. And yeah. thank you guys, first of all. The OGs know who they are and everyone else that follows hashtag. Thank you so much for that. There's so much consumable content. Yeah. A lot of flavors. Yes. Right? Like yes. you can you can find the people that are super like super fans where every move is a positive one. You can find people that are just basically overreactionists where they overreact to everything. There's pragmatic approaches, there's film approaches, there's you know, there's there's something out there for everybody depending on what you're looking for. Now, the downside is a lot of them are people just like us. So I will tell you <laughs> that not always the most reliable. No, right? no. Like, I think we're reliable. Our schedules just suck ass because we hundred percent. I, I, I would love to do this more, but our schedules suck. But but we do what we can when we can, and and thank you everybody for tuning in for that. Yeah, thank you for sticking with us as far as that goes. So this episode's going to be kind of like a contrast to how I started the episode, though. This or that? You must see some of you guys may see it on the screen. It's going to be over there somewhere. This or that? We're going to go through. And just ask you guys some questions, and Paul and I will answer them first, and you guys let us know which side you're on. We'll put it in the middle. How about that? There <laughs> we that go. Yeah, sure. This sure. or that. Paul, first round of the <laughs> – I already know the answer to this one, but I just, I just I'm putting a softball one up for the chat. Okay. This or that. Draft a receiver at 28 or trade for a veteran. Trade for a veteran, man. Just go get him. <laughs> okay. Go get him. You got like eight minutes of NFL uh, experience on this wide receiver group. <laughs> I'm including Curtis Samuel as much as Ryan will say, oh, he's never hurt. Okay, Ryan. <laughs> the snap counts say different, Ryan. Rachel. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I think 28 is a weird position to be in, right? Because Very. Um, you could, you're kind of getting sloppy seconds in the wide receiver group. I know people are going to say, well, this person, this player was drafted at 28. Sure, right? It's an easy argument to make, uh, but you're not getting choice, right? And I think that's at the bottom of the first round. The Bills want choice. You know, like mm -hmm. you could get the, you might get the best safety off the board at 28. You might get the best center off the board at 28. You're certainly not getting the best defensive end, defensive tackle or corner. You know, like there's some positions that they will never make it that far. Some yeah. drafts, there's been running backs who haven't been drafted in the first round. You know, like, so there's some positions where you get choice, just wide receiver, corner, defensive tackle, defensive end, uh, tackle, uh, wide receiver corner those are the positions that don't make it that far but there's a lot of positions that are available 28 that are first off the board i just don't think buffalo is going to be patient enough to want to wait i think you trade for a veteran wide receiver that's i've, I've been saying it for months brandon Ayuk is the guy for me like I'll okay just so, make it happen so i'll take that so you know i'll say this you know it could be where there's a situation that happened in 2020 where obviously jalen Rieger and henry ruggs was taking 10 spots before Justin Jefferson. Mm -hmm. So there may be something, a glitch in the scouting where, I, you know, keep the pick. Maybe you get lucky with one of these wide receivers. You think if your infrastructure is so good and the system so good with Joe Brady coming in, Curtis Samuel, 
having knowledge of the offense, having knowledge of Brady, a rookie coming in can develop a little bit faster. Who knows? You maybe you take McCon- uh, uh, McConkey, Mitchell, Thomas, and those guys that fall to you will be able to fit in your system. So you don't need to go and trade the 28th pick for uh, a veteran wide receiver or IU because you've been saying for two months, by the way, hashtag nation, yeah. two months. It's been this a hot been minute. Saying, like it, it was, really has been a hot yeah, minute. Yeah, it's so, been a hot minute. I will say, although it is a crapshoot, and you were right that you don't have any choice. Maybe the choice is that the the what you have done at one Bills drive will be enough for any rookie wide receiver to come in and flourish right away. Well, and you run into issues where, like, I'll give an example very quickly, right? Because I think you know everybody's quick to say, "Oh, well, you know, you you could get Justin Jefferson," like, because you know, oh. But like, let's let's not forget that at 21, Quentin Johnson was drafted by the Chargers. And I really like Quentin Johnson. I thought he was the best value <laughs> first round wide receiver in the draft. And yeah. Quentin Johnson had an abysmal 2023. Abysmal. Like to a point where there's been people in Los Angeles who have been talking about him not making the team, right? Like 6'4", 215, he got 38 balls for 431 yards and two touchdowns. He was tied for 113th in receptions. That was your 21st overall pick last year. So you got to be careful what you wish for at that wide receiver position at, at that draft space, right? Like yeah, in he that dropped, area. He dropped, he dropped like 40 balls for 20,000 disappointments. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. yeah, it's tough. Okay. All right. Next one. Until you get one, I'm going to do another one. Okay. Okay. This or that. <laughs> Hashtag nation gonna hate me on this one. Draft a center at twenty eight or go with Connor McGovern. This or that. Is there an option where I can step on a rusty nail <laughs> instead of either of those? <laughs> I, I just draft the center. Just draft the center. <laughs> Wow, you're going with the draft a center? Draft a center. Well, because we've had this conversation for the last two years. Like we thought yeah. Mitch, we thought Mitch Morris was, you know, oh, well, he'll be here for the first couple years. And now Allen's in his extension years and Morris is still here. And I yeah. you know, guy coming over a concussion, you know, concussion issues previously yeah. from Kansas City, former Reed guy, you know, if the connection with Reed and McDermott like it's just it all made sense for him to get here but yeah. he stayed longer than I thought uh, I'll be yeah. honest with you you know like he did uh, yeah all right I'll take uh what am I t- you're taking you're draft. taking Connor McGovern my I friend take Go ahead. you just defend Connor McGovern at center I could defend Connor McGovern at center in two words Aaron Arm Cromer. <laughs> Aaron Cromer <laughs> okay Cromer and two other words will clap Avoid the clap. Jim Jimmy Dugan. Dugan. That's, <laughs> That's good advice. advice. <laughs> I swear to God, if I ever ran into Tom Hanks, I would just have him. I wouldn't want him. I wouldn't want him to sign a baseball. Avoid the clap. Jimmy Dugan. I don't care. I that I do not want him to sign Tom Hanks. He will sign that baseball as Jimmy Dugan. If I ever meet Tom. hundred percent. That's 100%. the way to go. Right? Like that's the winner. That's the winner. Okay. I'm not carrying around a volleyball with me, you know, like. Have him draw right. Wilson's face from Castaway. I'm not doing that. All right. This or that, Paul. Oh, I'll go. I'll go. You want? I got one more. I got one more. In the, okay. In the, I got one, one more for bullet you. in the chamber. Are you going to forget it? Or do you no, want no, 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 no. No, you're good. You're good. So, this or that. James Cook is your RB1 or you spend one of your first two, your first two round picks on another running back. This is, this is, okay, so this is the feeling, sorry, I get to the mic. This is the feeling when I keep talking about centers being drafted. You want a running back in the second round when you already have Ty Johnson and James Cook on the team. Watching James Cook catch, catch footballs like this. Watch James in, Cook. In the, cor- in the corner of the end zone. Like, Ed, James Cook had one outstanding game receiving the ball. And then literally forgot that he had a left and right hand for the entire rest of the season. Uh, second rounder? 
Yeah. Ooh, Why not? Hey, Cook was okay. Look, look at look at where you've been drafting guys, right? You uh, went two third round picks, and you're like, eh, don't want to do that again. So you, then you grab Cook in the second, and now you're like, eh, I'll eh. take this. I'll take Cook. I'm not I'm not wasting a first one of my second round picks on a on a guy that's already going to be your starter. I want two starters out of the first two picks. I don't want. No. Okay. Well, I'm not going with you on this one, Paul. Defend drafting a running back second round. I got it. I'm going to be in the comment section while you do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, James Cook doesn't have enough ball security to survive a Sean McDermott offense any longer. That's just the way that is. That's He just doesn't have the ball security. I, I think that's I, that to me is the biggest, the biggest bugaboo about James Cook. Right. And I don't think that's something they're going to be able to fix. I really don't. It's a really? ball security issue. Yeah, How many times did he get sat on the bench because of that? He saw Ty Johnson go out there. Like, don't get me wrong. I like Ty Johnson, but Ty Johnson is not running back two for any NFL team. Like, I like him. I don't like him more than, you know, Latavius Murray. Like, I like him about the same. Like, I think that's the role that he plays, but you can be more, you have the opportunity to be more dynamic, especially since you've got nothing in the receiver room. Man, listen, if you don't like your choice of running, if you don't like your choice of wide receiver in the first round, you're going running back in the second. So well, there's something to be awful. said, guys, on contract years. Ty Johnson only has a one year deal. Yeah. These guys play different. They're, they're, mm -hmm. di they're built different when there's a, con a contract on the line. Yep. Yes, sir. So, not I'm not championing that Ty Johnson is going to be the best running back two in the league. I'm saying he'll get you through a half if mm -hmm. you if you feel like putting Cook on the bench. He'll yeah. get you through a half. He's and fine. they did they did often enough for me to tell you that them drafting a running back is not a, the weirdest thing you're going to hear during draft oh, weekend. God, if they draft a running back with the second round pick after not going wide receiver with the first, City Hall might have people out front. <laughs> <laughs> just saying i don't know all right mario what's your this and that this or that okay mcdermott continues to assume defensive controls or completely gives it to babbage oh this no or way that. no way he's not giving it up are you kidding me no, so you're he, going needs, this? he needs a timeout monkey he needs somebody to tell him when to call timeouts so that's gonna be babbage's <laughs> job Timeout, monkey. He's going to be going to be in the booth. Uh, no, no, no. Babbage will be on the field. He'll be just like that guy that chases Sean McVay around to make sure he doesn't bump into the ref. <laughs> I love that. That's a, what a it's, job. It's a thing. That if a you don't know, picture. there's a guy that one. his sole job is to make sure Sean McVay doesn't run into anybody. That yeah. guy's a bullpen catcher if I've ever seen one. <laughs> I swear to God, that's the best thing ever. Uh, okay, so I'm taking that. I'm taking yeah. I'm I'm thinking that last year. And uh, I talked with uh, Ryan about this. I think he mm -hmm. he and I talked about this on an episode not too long ago. McDermott, n n not consciously, but he will start thinking about his tree, mm -hmm. his coaching tree. And Babbage is one of the guys that he brought up along with his father. Like, didn't bring up his father, but he brought him up. He's still there. Now he's a defensive coordinator. Now yeah. he's going to have his branches start to filter through the NFL and the things that he's doing. So he can assume – 100% control. He needs to do something. If last year taught McDermott anything, his game management already that was in question is extremely worse mm -hmm. when he has to call the defensive calls because he's only focusing on one side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Also, this gives complete autonomy to Joe Brady on the offensive side. And he's already fired an offensive coordinator. He has to overlook what Brady's doing. Well, I mean, how many offensive coordinators has this team really gone through? You know, like four. Think, think about it. Yeah, since McDermott got here, right? You had Dennison, Dable. Now, Dable obviously got a promotion, but I mean, yeah, that's turning out great. Um, and then Dorsey for a season and a half, and now Brady. You know, and, and again, they just keep adding guys with offensive coordinator experience. Like it's just yeah. at, at different positions. Adam Henry, you you had mentioned it off air. Adam Henry, for, former collegiate yeah. offensive coordinator, right? There's, like, a, there's a vast difference between calling a game and calling plays. Dorsey yeah. was calling plays. Yeah. Brady was calling the game. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's the difference between them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like that. I, I like that the argument right there. You think he's that's not going to relinquish control? I it's think a lot of people have that question. I know it's a question down the line, but that's what we do here. Like we, 
we talk about things and then like three, four weeks later, you'll hear it on another channel. It's not a big deal. All right. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Give me one second. Uh, okay. This or that. Mitchie Biscuits, the savior if Josh Allen goes down or do the Bills spend one of their fifth, many fifth round picks on a quarterback? Why would they do that anyway? I mean, it's, it's, not like it's he's been a play. while. It's been a while since they. It's not like he's going to play. Bring Peterman back. For what? For a to bag of donuts to throw T-shirts into the into the stands? No, Peterman. By all accounts, by all accounts, before you guys roast me in the chat again. By all accounts, Peterman in the lot in the film room is a savant. I've heard how else is he still in the league, Paul? Yeah. He just okay. can't connect the dots when it gets to the field. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you want a guy like that in the locker room or in the mm -hmm. film room? I don't know. I don't care. He's not gonna play. Fifth round pick isn't gonna play any at all. So this or that, mm, I'll I'll go with that because then you get four years on a deal where no one's going to touch him if you cut him and put him on a practice squad. Mm -hmm. You get a four-year deal. Mitchie's only here for one, isn't he? Yeah. If I'm, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take drafting one with one of your fifth rounders then. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have to defend the other side of the point here, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do, oh Paul. God. You son of a gun. You rope a dope me. I was going to take Mitchie. Yeah, I was like, this I is funnier. L listen, right? It's not like he can lose this job, right? <laughs> like if he gets thrown in there, it's not like, it's not like he was the starter. Can't lose this job. He lost the job to, he lost the job to Kenny Pickett. He lost the job to Kenny Pickett twice. Twice. <laughs> twice. Pickett is such a horrible name for a quarterback. I know, I know. Draft that was cursed, oh boy. But you know, there's, there's, there's some quarterbacks at the back end of this draft that are guys that Buffalo might take a chance on. Um, you know, if you want the guys who are really polished, there's uh, Michael Pratt from Tulane. He's he's pretty polished, but you know, I wouldn't tell you he's got the strongest arm in the world. But he kind of fits that mold of what they look for with with Peterman, right? A complete level quarterback. Uh, again, I, I believe he has 20, 20 vision. Um, and then there's players like Jordan Travis from Florida state who has just a pure raw athlete and is fundamentally just a nightmare at the quarterback position, but again, pure raw athlete. So I think at some point you have to look at drafting a quarterback. Right. Like, I, I don't think you want to keep playing the backup quarterback tango. God forbid something happened. Um, but obviously you, the plan is to never need the contingency plan. But you got I think you have to look at it. Um, it the difference in this offense between Josh Allen and Mitchie Biscuits is just it's just too much. Right. Mm -hmm. The gap in talent and the gap in game plan is just simply too much. I'm not saying you're going to find Josh Allen Jr. Don't misinterpret that. But a quarterback who is mobile would add um a bit more of a would add a bit more of continuity should something happen to Allen. Gotcha. We saw Kyle Allen not throw a pass all year. He that appeared in what eight games? You know, he had to relieve Allen in like six games. I mean I'm worried about Josh. Hey. All right. I got one for you. Oh yeah. Let's go. Got another one for you. <laughs> Film a two-hour podcast with Drew drinking as much as he does mm -hmm. or go to an hour buffet with Laisel. <laughs> okay, hold on. Because I've almost done both of those. <laughs> so give me a second. Um, See, the problem, Drew drags it down with him, right? Like, Laisel's not going to make me eat more. But Drew's gonna drag me into deep water, like he's gonna he drags you into deep water. That's why the NFL draft we're doing day two with the Rock Pile Report, yes. and th we're that's four and a half hours. Like that's a lot of time to be irresponsible, Mario. It is a lot of time. It it's is. A lot of time it's to gonna be, be fun. We're gonna it's have gonna it here, great. guys. I'm going to the All You Can Eat with Ryan. I knew you would. <laughs>
Because yeah, you're going to force me to drink with Drew, aren't you're you? You're damn right I am. Listen, some people are built for speed and some people are built for comfort. I am built for neither. Okay? So <laughs> I got to... I could survive in an all-you-can-eat buffet with Ryan for an hour. I just can't do the old tub nightmare that will be Drew at two hours at an open bar. Can't do it. Can't compete. I'll be passed out in the car in an hour and a half, so I'm yeah. fine with that. I'll <laughs> fine with going with Drew. Okay. Mario, this or that? Oh, I got one. Okay, good. Uh, this or that? Rasul Douglas continues his uh, renaissance as CB1, or Kair Elam dominates in the early going, becomes your CB1. Oh, my God. That's so interesting because Babbage was with Elam when he got drafted, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. If my ears are correct, when Babbage took over control of the secondary, Elam was drafted. Babbage was the linebackers coach the year that he was drafted. Oh, he was. He was yeah. the linebackers coach for two years. He was right. Yeah. So he okay. Well, going into year three. Oh my lord! I'm I don't sure. lose. It. I could double check that. I don't lose in any that? scenario because Benford has been a godsend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Talk yeah. about doubling up at a position when you needed to that same year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the defense will be in the hands of Babbage although overseen by McDermott, and I think Kair Elam makes a resurgence. Okay. So I'm going to go with Kair Elam. Not right away, though, because yeah. the ghost of Christmas past will always come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. But I think eventually around week eight, he ends up being a beast. Uh, Rasul Douglas is awesome. I, I mean, I love I, I'm so curious what he looks like with an offseason with Buffalo because he came in and they just said, just play man, dude. Like, just go, I, I would like to, I, I look forward to seeing what it looks like when he understands his responsibilities at a higher level than what they were able to do with him. Right. He's been around for a long time. So I think there were a lot of concepts they could throw at him. Right. Yeah. But to have a full off season, it's just different. Right. Yeah. It, it's just a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful that, that, you know, you can retain the results there. Right. And you don't get diminishing returns from just knowing more and having, carrying more responsibility. Uh, I had one, but I think and I think it's kind of unfair to one of the participants. Since when do we care about fair? Who has the better? Because he'll be thirty-one. That's the tough mm -hmm. part about it. Who has a better four-year stretch? Stephon Diggs starting at thirty-one, or the second-round pick that the Bills got for him? Because it's hard because you don't know who it is. Well, Diggs is also on a one-year deal. Yeah. Now, right? So, so I think I think that I think that makes that that argument tough because he could end up in Las Vegas. You know, like he could go. Yeah, he could, he go, could go anywhere. I don't know why you would want to be a free agent at thirty-two. Right? I don't know why you'd negotiate to be a free agent at thirty-two. Maybe it's because you don't want to get cut. You don't want to be the cap casualty to hit free agency. You want to control where you're going to go. You can control the narrative. But yeah. why you beg to be a free agent at 32, I guess I'll just, I'll never understand that. Um, assuming the Bills hold on to that pick. I right? don't think they do, but that's, I, don't I think thought so it was interesting either. Because we always talk about Allen being compared to Mahomes, not Baker or Sam or sure. maybe yeah. even Lamar, because mm -hmm. evidently that's what the Bills gave up to get Allen. They gave up Mahomes. Right. So he's always going to be compared to Mahomes. So right. I always think that. When you trade picks, that's why. Remember what? How many years did I want to do an episode comparing Diggs to Jefferson, and that mm -hmm. the Bills make the right move? Yeah, and we both agree they did because you brought in a veteran wideout that helped your young quarterback. Yeah, the we, needs were different. Yeah, the needs, the needs were, were different. different. It, it wasn't about the stats on the on the paper, right? And it that's what people will ultimately. Like, oh, what, yeah. what the Buffalo Bills did in two years was give up the, the only two ninety nines in Madden currently. Yeah, people use weird, weird stuff to make points, you know, like, yeah, yeah, they use weird stuff to make points. So I think I first off, I don't think Buffalo makes that Minnesota pick. That's too valuable a pick for Buffalo to hold on to. They're going to package that pick and move that. I mean, Minnesota is going to suck next year. They're going to suck. So that pick's going to be a very good pick. So I don't think Buffalo holds on to it, but 
in the argument, it, for the sake of the argument, whatever the second round pick is, it would have to be a total flame out to be worse than a 31 year old Stefan Diggs going into free agency at 32 with no promise of where he's going to land. Like I'll take the draft pick a oh, hundred times out of a hundred. So I got to take Diggs. Great. Yeah, you sure do. He, Hey, I'll make the argument for you. Hey, he's going to CJ Stroud, man. Yeah. They might negotiate a longer term thing. Who knows? But you know, th- he's also got field stretchers now, right? Like mm-hmm. there was nobody there stretching that field in Buffalo for him. That is true. He'd be able to work the middle, and that's maybe there's something they want on mm-hmm. the other side of Dalton Schultz. Right. Who knows? Well, look, they're re- they're trying to replace Brandon Cooks. I think I think that's an upgrade. I, I think Diggs is an upgrade over Cooks in that respect. That veteran presence, yeah, it's an upgrade. All right, Paul. What did you did you have one? Do you have another one? Um, because I got one again. No, I don't. I don't really have one that I'm that I think is great. I got a this or that. I'm gonna end it on this one. This or that for the chat. Would you rather try to tackle Khalil Shakir in the open field, mm-hmm. or take a 15 yard comeback route from Josh Allen? Give me the hell away from that pass. <laughs> you want to let Ed Oliver carry the ball? I'd rather deal with that. <laughs> Listen. There was a there was a movie back in the early 90s, Death Becomes Her, I believe is the name of it. And the 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 movie poster is somebody standing there with a hole through the middle of their body on the movie poster. Josh Allen doesn't throw two guys, he throws it through them. The, the, the only reason that receivers catch the ball is because physics dictates that a football <laughs> cannot go through a human body yet. Oh, my God. That's beautiful. Guys, hit that like and subscribe button. Tell YouTube that this video is good. We're out of here. Hit the dislike button. It doesn't matter. Or hit the yeah, dislike engage- button. doesn't do anything anymore. Apparently. I just, just, engagement's engagement. That's it. See you guys right here. All right, later.